tonight on ESPN. It's about more than just basketball as Bowling Green takes on Buffalo in the annual Play for K game. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us alongside Bowling Green student Tony Meinking. I'm Brad Wozniki. Undoubtedly, you or someone you know has been in some way affected by cancer. And tonight, Bowling Green women's basketball is taking their opportunity to show support for breast cancer awareness. Yeah, this game's being played for the 250,000 women diagnosed every year, as well as the 3.3 million currently living in the U.S. Tonight's matchup truly is more than just a game. And now as we switch our focus to tonight's matchup, we look at Buffalo first. The Bulls come in 12-2 in Mid-American Conference play, the most MAC wins they've had in program history. And if Buffalo comes away with the win here tonight, they would lock up their first ever MAC East regular season championship. And a big reason why Buffalo has had so much success this season is their senior leadership, including Stephanie Reed, the true definition of a point guard. Stephanie really gets it done on both sides of the court. She's shooting over 40% from the field, over 40% from three, as well as 77% from the line. And on defense, she's pulling down three rebounds a game, as well as two steals. And we can't forget about how well Reed distributes the basketball. Averages better than seven assists per game. That's good enough for number two in the MAC right now, behind Carmen Grande of Ball State. And now for the Bowling Green Falcons. They're looking to snap an eight game losing streak coming into this one. And we know they need to attack the basket with how well Buffalo defends the perimeter. Carly Santoro, one of the best players at getting to the basket, 11 double doubles on the season. Now the Falcons really need to rely on Carly attacking the basket tonight. That's gonna create more opportunities for them. And also she gets it done by pulling down rebounds, getting those second chances for Bowling Green tonight. Looking for another strong performance out of the junior from Bellevue, Ohio. Bowling Green coming into this game at 10 and 15 overall. Buffalo at 21 and four. You look at the starting five for the Bulls, you have Stephanie Reed, followed by Sierra Dillard, who has been excellent after transferring from UMass. Then you have Catherine Upps, Summer Hemphill, and Cassie Ausler, the six foot three senior center. For the Bowling Green Falcons, Sydney Lambert, followed by Carly Santoro, then Katerion Thompson, one of the best three point shooters on this Falcons team. Haley Puck, one of two seniors, and Angela Perry, Getting the start down low tonight. That's a look at tonight's starting lineups. Buffalo coming into this game having won five in a row. The Bulls have been perfect at home this season and very good on the road. Looking at the all-time series, Bowling Green does have the advantage 25 to 12. The last meeting was in the first round of the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Buffalo came out on top 61 to 45, led by Joanna Smith with a game high 24 points. Cassie Ausler added 16 and Stephanie Reed had 12 points and nine assists. Bowling Green was led by Abby Siefker with 13 and Sydney Lambert, the only other Bowling Green player in double figures with 10. And before we get the tip off for tonight's game, let's send it over to the third member of our crew, Bowling Green student, Samantha Heishman. One of the biggest battles that many women face every day is breast cancer. Fans wear pink tonight to show their support for all the courageous women who have faced or are currently facing cancer. The a national platform that is honored by sports teams of all ages is the Play for K initiative. This supports the Coach K, K. Yao Cancer Foundation. Head coach K. Yao was known for her strength on the court, but as she coached, it was the battle she faced off the court that showed her resilience at a more powerful level. She fought breast cancer three times throughout a 22 year span. She had much success as the head coach of the women's basketball team at North Carolina State University. In her career, she received multiple Hall of Fame awards, was an eight time national coach of the year and won Olympic gold as a coach. However, it was the awareness she brought to cancer patients and cancer research that was truly her greatest impact. Kay lost her hard-fought battle in 2009. Her vision of bringing awareness to cancer turned into something incredible, a way to combine sports and cancer fundraising. When these girls play on the court today, they will not just be showing their love for basketball, but showing their support for a cause that unites them with a much bigger team, a team with one goal, to eventually find a cure for cancer. That is what Coach Kay wanted 
That is what we all want. And we are underway with tonight's ball game. Bowling Green winning the tip. The Falcons coming off a 69 to 58 loss on the road against Ohio. Some of the numbers that really stuck out from that game for Bowling Green in a losing effort was the Falcons had 22 turnovers and they were just seven of 15 from the free throw line. And Ohio did an excellent job of taking advantage of the Bowling Green turnovers with 28 points off turnovers. Santoro in there early grabbing rebounds. And off glass and good, the freshman Angela Perry. Perry came out of high school as the 14th ranked center in the country in the class of 2017, ranked by ESPN. And Reed looking to get to the basket, able to find Ausler. And Ausler open underneath. A lot of space for the center down low. Too easy, I think, if you're Bowling Green. Yeah, but that's starting with Stephanie Reed. She's really just creating those opportunities for the rest of her team by driving in. Buffalo coming off an 85-71 win at home over Akron, in which Summer Hemphill led the way with 18 points and nine rebounds. She was one of five Buffalo players in double figures. Stephanie Reed did have a double-double in that one, 10 points and 10 assists. As the shot clock winding down from the elbow, it's Lambert knocking it down. Sydney Lambert already starting off early. That's a great sign for Bowling Green if they want to get this one underway. And Ausler underneath, able to finish over top, Haley Puck. Gasly Ausler, the reigning Mac East player of the week. Her teammate, Sierra Dillard, has been named Mac East Player of the Week three times this season. And underneath, no good for Angela Perry. Now Dillard dumps it down low. Great look, but too far underneath was Hemphill. Bowling Green looks like they're really trying to attack the paint early, really going down low so far. Not much staying beyond the arc. Two minutes gone by here in the opening quarter. And Perry, one-on-one. -on -one. And too much that time. Staying in the paint, Bowling Green still trying to stick it in there. And Reed trying to find Hemphill. Not a bad idea there as you look at Bowling Green head coach Jennifer Roos in her sixth season as the head coach of this program. She's worked with a very young team this season. You know down the road with the experience that players like Angela Perry and Claire Gloniak have gotten and Sierra Thompson along with Kennedy Williams. But those young players, the experience they've gained will only benefit this team in the future. As you see Felicia Leggett Jack, the head coach of Buffalo, also in her sixth season as the head coach of this program, recently surpassed 250 career wins. She's coached Buffalo to three straight seasons of 20 or more wins. Yeah, and she's coaching Buffalo really out, going outside of the United States. Has a lot of international players, mainly from Australia. And it's kind of an interesting tactic that you're starting to see here more in Mac play. Katerion Thompson off the mark. Back comes Reed. And Hemphill. Going to be a foul against Santoro. Just got a piece of Hemp Hill. Stephanie Reed moves really fast down the court. She's going down way quicker than the Bowling Green team so far. Hemp Hill, a 63% free throw shooter. One of four Buffalo players averaging in double figures. She's just under 11 points a game. Hemphill, one of those players that not only gets it done scoring the basketball, but rebounding as well. She averages better than seven boards a game as Buffalo brings out their full court press. Santoro, good look. Off the iron and on the backside, it's knocked out of bounds. We're gonna save by Bowling Green. Haley Puck does not agree. Buffalo starting this press early. They're really trying to get under Bowling Green's skin early. 
with the quickness and the length that this Buffalo team has, there's so many different ways that they can attack you. Definitely. I mean, just look at their center, number 31, Cassie Ausler. She's 6'3", playing the center position. That's taller than anyone Bowling Green has on their roster. Four minutes gone by in the opening quarter. Haley Puck up top for three. Off the iron, and it's one and done for the Falcons. Diller, the little hesitation move. And the runner no good. It will stay at this end as Andrea Cecil and Claire Gloniak will check in. Claire Gloniak played just one minute last time out against Ohio. It was a coach's decision there. Bowling Green thought they matched up better. With players like Sierra Thompson and Terry Battle out there on the floor. And Gloniak, jumper is good. It's back to a one possession game. Bowling Green really staying in the paint. That's where their points are coming from so far. Not staying behind the arc too much. Only two shots today from three. And Gloniak had Reed underneath her. It's going to stay with Buffalo. Tough break there for the Falcons. Buffalo offensively fourth in the MAC, averaging better than 76 points a game, and Hempill continues her strong start. Give her six of the Buffalo 10 points. Loniak got position. Off glass and good. Dillard lines up a three. Quick response there from Buffalo. Buffalo's running the floor really nice tonight. They're catching Bowling Green off guard in transition. Cecil now looking for help. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Katerion Thompson, good look. Too strong on that attempt. But if you're Bowling Green, you can't ask for a better look there. No, that's great. They're really, their offense is really going through that low post movement with a nice shot right there by number 31, Cassie Ausler. Just inside the arc, but you can see the range of Ausler. Able to step out, great mid-range game. That's great to have a center that can be able to shoot mid-range like that, hitting it from the angle. Santoro attacks, no good. Gloniak on the offensive glass, and we'll have a Buffalo foul. That would be their first team foul. 347 remaining in the opening quarter. It's Buffalo leading on the road 15 to eight. Stephanie Reed attacking and creating opportunities, finding Ausler underneath for two. And then Sydney Lambert, shot clock winding down, knocked down the jumper. Bowling Green on their feet during the break. Once again, making a lot of noise in support of breast cancer awareness here in the annual Play for K game. As Buffalo leads this one 15 to eight with 347 remaining in the first quarter. Brad Wasnicki and Tony Mind King back with you. Tony, what have you liked about Bowling Green's performance so far? Bowling Green's doing a great job at staying in the paint. They're not taking those perimeter shots, which is kind of unlikely to see from them. And you see they're just knocking down those paint shots. That's why they're keeping it close right now. And Lambert. There's another shot in the paint. And here comes Dillard. Sierra Dillard, the team's leading scorer. 15 points a game. A foul underneath that will go against Gloniak. Her first personal, team third. Ausler step into the line where she shoots 80% on the season.
One more to come. Buffalo coming into this game as the highest ranked mid-major team in the country. Off to a nice start so far for the Bulls, leading by nine here on the road. And Dillard a near steal. Bowling Green has a team coming in, averaging just over 63 points a game, 11th in the MAC. As Haley Puck doing a nice job there of attacking, not settling for a long range shot as my partner has pointed out. And Puck, the right person for Bowling Green to have at the line. Shooting better than 80% on the season. And two for two. We're back to a seven point game. Reed, good look underneath. Unable to drop it was Mariah Suchan. Bowling Green catching a break there. Cecil, good look to Gloniak. Up and in. You can see how much more comfortable Bowling Green looks when they're working quickly at the offensive end. Yeah, and you've got to remember, Claire Glodiak is just a redshirt freshman. She's still young, and she's got a really tough matchup tonight, and she's doing great so far. Dillard into Ausler, and Cassie Ausler, a lot of traffic there, still able to put it up and in. Bowling Green's got to figure out how to stop that from going under the basket because they're just dishing out assists easily down there. Ausler already has 10 points in this ball game. She's now been in double figures in 21 of 26 games this season. As Andrea Cecil knocks down Bowling Green's first three. The Falcons one of five from long range. Cecil had that big performance against Northern Illinois in which she had 20 points, but then fouled it up with just two points against OU. She was one of seven from the field against the Bobcats. You gotta love seeing that from your young players if you're Bowling Green. As Dillard answers, Buffalo two of two from deep. Sierra Dillard, as we mentioned, the transfer from UMass. She was leading the team in scoring at the time of transfer better than 15 points a game. And Gloniak called for steps. Katerion Thompson going to return. Hemphill back on the floor for Buffalo. And she is joined by Autumn Jones. Autumn Jones, along with Dillard, had 13 points last time out. Both Dillard and Jones were able to knock down three threes. Hemphill off the feed from Dillard. More unselfish play from the Bulls. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Lambert inside to Gloniak. Chance for Buffalo to make this a double digit lead. Ausler, quick shot underneath. And Gloniak has just committed her second personal. Stephanie Reed, you can see number one in the MAC in assist to turnover ratio at 2.8. Just ahead of Carmen Grande, the outstanding point guard for Ball State. Stephanie Reed in her career with the three assists so far tonight now has 627 career assists. She's too shy of 11th all time in the Mid American Conference. Six, 15 year score, Bowling Green can hold for the final shot. Yeah. 
Less than 10 seconds. Lambert trying to make something happen. Tough jumper and it goes. A little momentum there for Bowling Green to end the first quarter. It's a nine point advantage for the Bulls after 10 minutes of play. Ausler inside, 12 points so far in this one. Sierra Dillard finding Hemphill for two of her eight points. Bowling Green men's basketball head coach Michael Huger in attendance for this one. His team coming off a tough one last night right here at the Stroh Center, falling to Akron, 81 to 79. Jermon Ivey had the go-ahead basket in the final seconds to give the Zips the win. Only four games remain in the regular season before MAC tournament, including tonight's game for Bowling Green and Buffalo. There's Lambert right down Main Street, but could not finish. I think she was a little surprised she was that open. I think she was too. I mean, the paint's been such a factor tonight. And Ausler gets the members bounce at the other end. She's hitting that from mid-range at the elbow of the paint. Buffalo's actually outscoring Bowling Green right now, 10 to eight in the paint. I mean, seems like the game's going down low today. Not much coming from beyond the arc. Buffalo, 21 of their last 22 games. They've either tied or had the lead on points in the paint. That's something that Buffalo head coach Felicia Leggett Jack has been very happy with. Can't forget about the dominance that Buffalo had in the paint against Toledo earlier this season, in which the Bulls had 66 points in the paint. 66. That's just, that's an unheard of number. That's insane. They're just playing that whole game in the paint. They're not even taking it outside of the yard. That's just a credit to how well Buffalo moves the basketball in the paint. You can just see how fast Buffalo is in, these, in this game as well. Their transition is just lightning. Catherine Upps gives it up to Ausler, just grazing the iron on that jumper. Back comes Kennedy Williams, freshman point guard. Great ball handler. Also excellent at pushing the tempo. Kennedy Williams, Katerion Thompson, Angela Perry, Carly Santoro, and Sierra Thompson out there on the floor for Bowling Green. Autumn Jones finds Reed. And Stephanie Reed off the mark. Santoro, blocked by Ausler. Autumn Jones in transition. Buffalo remains perfect from long range so far, now three of three. Autumn Jones spent all of last season at Pensacola State where she averaged just under 10 points a game. Sierra Thompson walked with the basketball. Mariah Suchan back on the floor. And Jane Euchre in for Bowling Green. And now for Buffalo, you've got Hemphill, Reed, Suchan, Catherine Upps, and Autumn Jones on the floor. And Reed, a little English on that basketball to get it to go off the window. Buffalo now in front by 16. Andrea Cecil, no good. And Euchre trying to corral the rebound. It was knocked out of bounds by Buffalo. Bowling Green's really trying a pick and roll low post offense today. 
Buffalo's trying to kind of starting to figure them out though. It's been a lot tougher in this second quarter. Less than seven to play in the first half. Carly Santoro, Bowling Green's leading scorer, better than 13 a game. Attacks in an offensive foul. Autumn Jones taking the charge. Sierra Dillard back into the ball game. Lambert and Haley Puck return for Bowling Green. One thing we know Buffalo is going to look to do is continue to attack the basket and try and create more opportunities at the free throw line. The Bulls were just two of five against Akron. Whereas Akron got to the line 26 times. Catherine ups, two more for Buffalo and Bowling Green calls a timeout. 6.20 remaining in the second quarter. Buffalo with their largest lead, 18 point ball game. The defense there from Cassie Ausler and then Stephanie Reed finding Ausler in transition. Buffalo 35, Bowling Green 17, as we welcome you back to the Stroh Center for this Mid-American Conference women's basketball matchup. Buffalo looking for what would be win number 22 on the season. They're in great position so far, leading by 18. We knew coming into this game, players like Stephanie Reed and Sierra Dillard Great at distributing the basketball. Buffalo already nine assists in this ball game. You know, they're playing very unselfish basketball. They're driving, creating opportunities. They don't take the open shot. If you watch closely, they see the open shot and they're, they're dishing the ball rather than taking that. We'll see what adjustments Bowling Green makes out of the timeout. Here's Haley Puck. And no good. A quick outlet to Dillard. And a blocking foul called. Bowling Green faithful thought Katerion Thompson had her feet planted. Jennifer Roos having a fun moment with Sierra Dillard. And Dillard trapped. And underneath, that's two points for Brittany Morrison, her first points of the ball game. Morrison comes in averaging three and a half a game. Jane Euchre for three. Bowling Green now one of eight from beyond the arc. As Dillard can't knock it down. And it's off of Reed. I think Stephanie Reed was looking for a foul. Cassie Ausler, you saw, had the first block of tonight's game. She averages two blocks a game. That's number two in the MAC. With the block tonight, she now has 18 straight games with at least one block. Reed, three-pointer. A long rebound to Haley Puck, who gives it up to Lambert. Katerion Thompson attacks. The sophomore getting better and better with the versatility of her game, known for being a three-point shooter. She's done a nice job of attacking more and more as the season has gone on. Open look, and the three-pointer for Catherine Upps, who has started all 26 games this season. 
another experienced player for this Buffalo team. Definitely. This Buffalo team is really just coming together. They're a really sound team. You see they got around seven passes on that last offensive play. That's just crazy, and that's great for an offensive, for a coach to hear offensively. Dillard. Now Catherine ups. Trying to go off the window. Rebounded by Euchre. Bowling Green wanted an over the back call. Falcons just one of eight from beyond the arc. Not a surprise given how well Buffalo guards the perimeter. The Bulls, number one in the MAC in three point field goal percentage defense, holding opponents to just 27%. That foul going up on Mariah Suchan. Andrea Cecil, no problem on the first. Cecil, former All-Ohio player during her time at Oak Harbor High School. As a senior, she averaged 22 points a game, better than seven rebounds a game, and three and a half assists. Seen a lot of different faces for this Bowling Green team. I haven't seen Kennedy Williams out there that much this year. And she's been the backup point guard, and she's worked to earn her minutes more and more, gaining experience. And coming in as a recruit for this Bowling Green team, Jennifer Roos pointing out, She's one of the best ball handlers you're going to see come through this program. You said it earlier, and you can really see it out there. She really pushes the pace pretty hard, catches defenses off guard because Bowling Green likes to sit with the ball in their hands, likes to be a little more singular than dishing it out around. And Kennedy really brings a different aspect to that. And Bowling Green has had their fair share of good ball handlers come through this program. Looking at players like Tracy Pontius, who could not only distribute the basketball but score it as well. Jess Slagle. You also had Kate Ochter, one of the all-time greats to come through this program. And Katerion Thompson trying to get to the basket was tripped up. Foul against Teresa Anwuka. Katerion Thompson averaging six points a game. Knocks down the first. Bowling Green now 5 of 5 at the line. And 1 for 2. Reed racing the other way is fouled. Wait and see who this is against. I believe they're going to call it against Kennedy Williams. That's a great test for the freshman going up against the senior. So much you can learn from a player that has had a ton of success in Mid-American Conference play and throughout her career at Buffalo. And Kennedy just guarding this Stephanie Reed is just such an experience for her. Stephanie just dishes the basketball so well and even her sitting on the bench, she can just learn from watching her play. Reed able to knock down the second. It's a 19-point game as Buffalo comes out in their full-court press. Cecil able to split the defense. Open look for Santoro. Yes, sir! Harley Santoro giving Bowling Green their second three of the ball game. And Dillard fading away, left it short. Tipping the hands of Hemphill. That's a second chance opportunity that Bowling Green cannot afford to give up. Less than two to play in the second quarter. Battle posting up. Cecil fires a three. Not the look Bowling Green wanted on that possession.
Dillard, the fake and the finish, that was a pretty move. A little smile as she goes down the floor. Buffalo's creating a lot of separation when they're moving down offensively. They're really catching Bowling Green off guard. And Kennedy Williams, contested look, it's out of bounds. And Buffalo basketball. So far, the Bulls with a 19 to eight advantage in the second quarter. Ausler against the freshman battle. And traveling called. Reed did not agree. Hannah Hall, the freshman from Hamilton, Ontario has just checked in giving Reed a well-deserved rest. Reed so far, three points, five assists. Loose basketball picked up by Battle. Now an open look for Katerion Thompson. Cecil underneath draws a Buffalo foul. You pointed out in the open, need to see Bowling Green working hard on the offensive glass all night. Definitely, and you've kind of seen a difference in the second quarter. They've kind of came out of the paint. They've been trying more threes, and that might be because the game's getting, is a little bit too high of a scoring game, but neither way, they were doing very successful in that first quarter. They might have to make some halftime adjustments and get back to that. Two for two for Cecil. He's got seven points on the night. Ausler against Battle. No good with the left hand. And last touch by Bowling Green. Now Buffalo has a chance to hold for the final shot. Just 26 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Hemphill, no good. Kennedy Williams with the basketball. The drive, lost the handle. And the tie up, possession arrow pointing to Bowling Green. Great effort there from Terry Battle. If she doesn't get the tie up there, Buffalo might have a basket at the other end with how quickly they're able to push it up the floor. Williams. Time winding down, Santoro got the shot off, but it's short, and Buffalo on the road will head to the locker room, leading by 18. 45-27 year score. Three-pointer for Catherine Upps, one of four Buffalo threes, and Sierra Dillard, the pretty finish off the window. time here in Bowling Green and Buffalo leading the Falcons 45 to 27 after 20 minutes of play and I am joined now by Bowling Green Athletic Director Bob Moosbrugger and Bob a lot to look forward to a lot to talk about right now yeah. we'll start with Bowling Green Volleyball Daniela okay. Tomich the recent contract extension great for the program yeah we're excited about uh, the season that they had and definitely she earned the extension um, so we extended her for three years and uh, I think they can build. That was a young team that they had this year, and I think they can build and uh, continue to compete for championships. The championship this year was a uh, nice surprise with a team that they, a young team that they had. So we're looking forward to what she can accomplish in the future. The first time since 1992 that Bowling Green Volleyball won a MAC regular season championship. Now we'll turn it over to the gridiron. Mike Jenks, sure. The recent recruiting class. Your thoughts on the job him and his staff did. You know, obviously, we didn't have the season that we wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Mike and his staff to go out and recruit with the vigor that they did and have another top three recruiting class back that up with a uh, number two recruiting class last year, you know, that gives us optimism for the future. And we're excited about, you know, the recruiting classes that they put together, the offense that we had last year, you know, averaging 30 points during the max season. And then with the additions on our defensive staff, Carl Polini, a Youngstown State guy, Youngstown, Ohio guy, 
been a coordinator at Nebraska. Jimmy Williams, a defensive line coach that has all kinds of experience. Uh, we're excited about the program, and, and certainly getting those recruits is the lifeblood of any coaching position in, in a program as well. And speaking of positions, obviously running back was an area that Mike Jinks and his staff were going to have to work hard on, looking to add some depth in that position. A great pickup in Ravion Hargrove, over 7,000 yards in his career at Trotwood Madison. Right, absolutely. And that, that's the one that uh, they waited the longest for. So when that fax came across, it was sweet for them to get, you know, he was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Ohio. And to get a Ohio kid that highly ranked is important for our program. And a big conversation right now in the NCAA is the proposal for the NCAA transfer change that would certainly empower <laughs> athletes more if they want right. to leave and go to another program. Yeah, and it depends who you read, mm -hmm. uh, what the proposal might be. Uh, the one that probably has been talked about the most recently is the Big 12's what they, it's not a proposal yet, um, but what they put out, that student athletes can, the talk is about student athletes moving on and being immediately eligible to another school. Right. And the Big 12 proposal uh, states that they can do that if they do three things. One, they've graduated, which is the rule now. Um, two, if, a, if your coach that recruited you was fired or resigned, that you could transfer and be immediately eligible, or your school has been put on probation and exempt from NCAA tournament uh, postseason play. So those three uh, will allow student athletes, and that's what the, everybody's talked about really, is coaches can come and go as they wish. Right. But these student athletes are, you know, some people would say held to a higher standard than these coaches. And uh, with what the Big 12 has put out there, that would give the student athletes the flexibility. Hopefully we think student athletes are coming to Bowling Green State University because the great school that we have, a great community, but let's be honest, they're attached to that coach as well. And if that coach were to move on, you know, they would probably have some second thoughts. And one more thing before we let you go. Some excitement coming this weekend to the Bowling Green State University campus over at Perry Fieldhouse, the MAC Indoor Track and Field Championships. Looking forward to hosting that event. We're excited about it. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be a packed event over there. Um, you know, the, the talent that's out there, the, these student athletes that run track and, and do field, uh, they're incredible athletes, and uh, we have one of the top shot putters in the nation, Aliyah Gustafson, and we're excited to see what she can continue to do and climb those charts. I think right now she's ranked sixth nationally in the shot put, um, but we're excited to host it. Uh, it should be a great venue for uh, the student athletes of, of the MAC schools, and uh, we're looking forward to setting it up tomorrow and getting going on Friday. Definitely looking forward to covering the event. Bob, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for all the work you do. Bowling Green Athletic Director Bob Moosebrugger, and we'll be back here on ESPN. Continue on with our halftime report here at the Stroh Center. Buffalo 45, Bowling Green 27. Bulls looking for their sixth straight win. Buffalo has had the advantage inside in this one. 20 first half points in the paint. You know, Bowling Green started out really strong. They were hitting the paint hard. Carly Santoro was starting that drive in, but they just kind of fell out and Buffalo's just really strong in there. You see it when they have Reed drive in. All of Bowling Green's team is just collapsing on her, and they're just ready to hit those open shots after. Summer Hemphill getting most of her production there underneath. She has 10 points in this ball game, one of two Buffalo players in double figures. Look at the first half numbers. The field goal percentages tell the story on the glass, 25 to 17. That helps Buffalo's cause. And then you go down to three-point percentage. Buffalo again with the advantage. The numbers tell the story. Definitely. And you can really see just Buffalo is hitting the pace hard. They're outplaying Bowling Green just conditioning-wise. They're fast down the field, fast down the court. And it really just shows in those numbers. You can tell my partner's ready for football season to return with the fast down the field there almost. That's a look at the first half numbers, and we'll be back in a moment here on ESPN.
Both teams back out on the floor and getting ready for the start of the third quarter here on ESPN. Buffalo leading Bowling Green by 18, and we'll take a look at some of the first half highlights. This was just a nine point ball game up to the first 10 minutes. But Cassie Ausler has had it going since the beginning. You can just see the versatility of her game. She's hitting mid-range shots at 6-3 as a center. That's a great feature to have. Sydney Lambert with the shot clock winding down. Tough jumper there, got it to go. That was one of two field goals for Lambert in the first half. And then you see the swat there by Ausler. The immediate transition opportunity leading to an Autumn Jones three. Buffalo with four first half threes. And sharing the basketball, finding an open look there for Catherine Upps. They're very unselfish with their play. You can really tell they just pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball. It's just a very well coached team. They all do their job and you can really tell by just looking at the score here tonight. And Sierra Dillard crafty with the basketball, able to get all the way to the rack there. Those are your first half highlights. More to come, including the third quarter in this Mid-American Conference matchup. Hey. Moments away from the start of the third quarter here on ESPN. Brad Wasnicki and Tony Meinking here with you. Look at the first half leading scorers. Cassie Ausler leading all scores with 14 points in this one. Summer Hemphill, production in the paint. She has 10 in this one. And Sierra Dillard knocking on the door to join those two in double figures. For Bowling Green, Andrea Cecil, seven points in this one. Gloniak with six. Sydney Lambert with four. Bowling Green's leading scorer on the season, Carly Santoro, three points in this one. And it will be the Bulls basketball to start the third quarter. And as we get the third quarter underway, let's send it over to the third member of our crew, Samantha Heishman, for some second half adjustments. Thank you, Samantha. Big block from Ausler on that drive there by Haley Puck. Second block on the night for Cassie Ausler, Mackey's player of the week. That second block matches her season average, actually. Lambert, three-pointer. Tough one there. Bowling Green now 2 of 14 from long range and off the Buffalo turnover, it's a Santoro three, her second of the night. Carly Santoro, the only Falcon to have 10 or more double doubles in the last 20 seasons as Ausler is able to answer. Lambert bumped by Reed. Lambert was quick to turn the corner there. Haley Puck puts it on the floor. Santoro on the drive. The scoop wouldn't go. And Reed throws it away. Good read there by the Bowling Green defense. Perry against Ausler. Nearly got it to go. 
as Ausler going for the block. Perry two points on the night. This will be her first free throw attempts. She's six of 10 on the season. Angela Perry, the freshman from Rochester High School, can't knock down the second. And ups at the other end. Quickly from one end to the other again for Buffalo. This transition is just really fast from Buffalo. They are beating Bowling Green down that court when they turn the ball over. Perry inside, blocked. Loose basketball, Santoro on the floor. Possession arrow to Bowling Green. Santoro. Carry on Thompson, a little hesitant. Shot clock winding down, and Haley Puck beats the buzzer. Bowling Green. Green's fourth three pointer of the ball game. Now the Falcons need to find a way to string together some stops. Buffalo has led by as many as 21 as Ups gets the and one. 51-34 your score and Catherine Ups will go to the line to try and complete the three point play. Catherine Ups is one of six international players for this Buffalo team. And that is also with her sister Lisa Ups who's on that bench right now. Now, the connection between that, between Buffalo and getting all these international players also actually comes from their assistant coach, Sherry Cordoba. She was an Australian native who actually played in Australia professionally, as well as places like Turkey, Spain, and Germany. And you, there's no doubt that she, they get this player straight from her. It's definitely benefited Felicia Jack and this Buffalo program. Different style of basketball when you play on the four inside. And a lot of what we're seeing from this Buffalo team is the transition. That's where that comes from, moving the basketball quickly for open looks. And what's actually kind of interesting is if you watch the Australian women's national team play, their youth team has a couple of these girls on there. So they have that experience. They have that national experience, that FIBA basketball. And it's just a whole different style of play when you come here in the U.S. to college women's. Definitely cannot understate how important and how beneficial it can be to play basketball overseas. You look at a couple of the players there, foreign players for Buffalo in Lisa Ups and Hannah Hall. 17 point ball game, Dillard nowhere to go on the baseline. And underneath, great look. Hemphill finding Catherine Ups. Buffalo's doing just a great job at finding those open players for when they drive the ball down low, swing it outside, and there's always someone sitting behind the basket. Definitely not the first time tonight we've seen a high percentage look, an open look underneath for Buffalo. And Gloniak, no good. Jones, a corner three. Well off the mark, but there's Ausler to clean it up. Ausler now with 18 points. She already has a double-double. 5.34 to play in the third quarter. Buffalo has tied their largest lead of the ball game. More work underneath from Cassie Ausler going off glass. And then underneath, Catherine Ups, two more.
four minutes gone by in the third quarter. Buffalo in front by 21. The Bulls continuing to shoot better than 50% from the field. Bowling Green at just 25%. The Falcons have matched the three-point makes from Buffalo in this ball game. The Bulls four of eight, Bowling Green four of 16, but the Falcons knocked down a couple to try and stay within striking distance in this second half. You know, Buffalo's just playing a great ball game tonight. They are just pushing the pace. Bowling Green's doing the best they can to stay up with them. We'll see in these next couple quarters how much that can actually be. And Gloniak double teamed. And Cecil looking for Gloniak. It's a Buffalo foul. And that will be the third personal on Ausler. Now when you see Bowling Green dish that ball out behind the arc, watch Buffalo be so quick to guard. It's really impressive how fast they're getting out there to guard that three-point shot. Haley Puck drives and finishes. Dillard drops it underneath. It was a nice no-look pass that Ausler couldn't finish. And Dillard can't knock down the open look. Lambert able to maintain possession. Pull up. Gives Sidney Lambert six points on the night. She's now three of seven from the field. Reed on the drive, contact, no whistle, gets her own miss. Loniak wants it. And another block for Ausler, that's at least her fourth block. <laughs> Buffalo in front by 17, with just over four minutes to play in the third. Sydney Lambert on the drive. Tough jumper, got it to go. Hey. Hey. 55-38 your score with 408 remaining in the third quarter. It's Bowling Green basketball. Falcons, two of eight from the field so far in the third quarter. Perry up top for three, and that's good. Angela Perry with her first career three-pointer. Reed, off glass with the left hand. That was not easy. And a foul going to be called against Reed. She went flying down the court after making contact with Lambert. She wanted a push off. For Reed, I believe that's her third personal. Lambert, the runner. Cecil on the offensive glass. Bowling Green with 11 offensive rebounds. Cecil up top for three. Nothing but the bottom. Andrea Cecil has shown the ability to take over ball games throughout the season. She has three games with 20 points or more. Unable to answer was Jones, but Ausler underneath is left all alone to clean it up. Lambert short. And Jennifer Roos immediately to the bench to bring in Kennedy Williams. Hemphill at the other end. Summer Hemphill, 12 points. She's one of three Buffalo players in double figures.
And an offensive foul. Third personal on Haley Puck. Wasn't much there. Maybe a little bit of Hollywood there, but that's a call we've seen quite often tonight. Less than two and a half to play in the third. And Reed the drive and one. Stephanie Reed adding to her all around performance. Seven points on the night for the senior. Last two seasons, she's been a member of the all Mac defensive team. Cannot take away just from how much Reed means to this team. Santoro trapped. And while splitting the defense, it's a Buffalo foul. Will go against Catherine Ups. Terion Thompson back on the floor. Santoro, a 66% free throw shooter. Off the mark on the first. Bowling Green now 8 of 11 at the line. That's an improvement on that last game against OU when they were 7 of 15. Coming in, the Falcons fourth in the Mac and free throw percentage at 71%. Santoro splits the pair. On the cross court look, unable to connect with Suchan. For Buffalo, that's their eighth turnover of the ball game. Loose basketball picked up. Morrison fouled hard by Cecil. one of seven Buffalo players to have scored in this one. Lambert back into the ball game. Morrison should continue to get some quality minutes down the stretch here with Ausler on the bench with the three personal fouls. And also the fact that Buffalo is in control of this ball game, leading by 19. A little bump from Morrison, and Santoro is going back to the line. Santoro has had some excellent offensive performances this season but because she's the leading scorer on this team she's been the focal point for a lot of defenses and that's limited her scoring on certain nights but we know she can score the basketball she came out 30 points to start the season her career high is 32 that came against Kent State last season Dillard, too strong. There's Catherine Ups with the offensive board. And Buffalo takes advantage of the second chance. Some free throws coming up. Sierra Dillard, a chance to 
Reached double figures with this trip to the line. Give her nine on that first make. She's had seven games of 20 or more points this season. Her career high came against Toledo when she had 30. Three-time MAC Player of the Week goes two for two. Cecil, no good. And Reed, the full head of steam, takes it all the way in. Too hard off the glass, but there's Morrison. 11 offensive boards for the Bulls. Buffalo's really quick on that transition. They're beating Bowling Green down the court on every turnover. Lambert tied up. Good hands there from Morrison as it will stay with the Falcons. Buffalo still keeping that defensive perimeter going. They're trapping on every ball that's coming to, to that three-point line. Less than 20 seconds to play in the third. Santoro trying to create. Cecil gets it off. Three-pointer no good. And over the back call against Angela Perry with 2.6 seconds remaining. Free throws for Mariah Suchan, who had her season high with 10 points against UNLV. She's looking for her first points on the night. Buffalo has done a nice job of preparing for Mid-American Conference play with the non-conference schedule they put together. Taking on teams like Nebraska and UNLV, as we mentioned. Also St. John's, as Santoro launches it from half court. Three quarters of play in the books here at the Stroh Center, and it's Buffalo with their largest lead. 22-point ball game, Stephanie Reed finding Summer Hemphill in transition. And then Stephanie Reed showing her offensive talents, getting to the basket for an and one. Jennifer Roos, her team in trouble. American Conference Women's Basketball. Buffalo taking on Bowling Green. The Bulls with the basketball, leading by 22. And Suchan no good. There's Morrison on the follow. Brittany Morrison back to the line. Second chance points tonight. Bowling Green and Buffalo even at 14 apiece. The points in the paint. One of the biggest discrepancies you'll see in this ball game, Buffalo a 40 to 12 advantage. And just watching this game, you can see that they are not taking shots outside. They are looking inside first. And that's their, that's their philosophy. They want to feed the ball inside. You see their highest leader is, Carrie, is uh, Cassie Os Osler. And she's sitting very happy with 20 points tonight because she's getting that ball every time in the paint. Housler also with 12 rebounds for a double-double performance. Four Buffalo players in double figures. And this is not a surprise, the effort that we've seen from this Buffalo team. We knew coming in this was going to be a big challenge for the Falcons. Buffalo fourth in the MAC in scoring, third in the MAC in points per game allowed, first in the MAC in three-point field goal percentage, a, game, a part of the game that Bowling Green really relies on, shooting it from the outside. As Autumn Jones fouled at the other end, will shoot two. Bowling Green's taken a new step this game, it seems like. You're seeing players like, Tom, like Katarian Thompson, she's taking the ball inside, and that's something we don't see too often because she's a primary perimeter shooter. She loves the three ball. 
but she's taking it inside. She's taking it in the paint in this game. Something new, and it's expanding her game. Autumn Jones, four points on the night, chance to make it five. Two for two. Extending the Buffalo lead to 24. Thompson, foot on the line, in and out. Step back try for Jones. Another offensive rebound for the Bulls, their 13th. And Jones attacking. She'll go back to the line. Kennedy Williams and Sierra Thompson set to check in. Madison Parker also ready to make her first appearance along with Rachel Myers. So four fresh bodies on the floor for Bowling Green to join Angela Perry. We've got four freshmen out on the floor for Bowling Green with one senior. For Rachel Myers, this is her first appearance in the last Four games, she has not seen action. Buffalo's keeping this full court press on, even with this lead. And Madison Parker was fouled by Hannah Hall. Ioleka Shodade in the ball game, her first appearance. The junior from Windsor, Ontario. Making her 14th appearance of the season. She plays about five minutes a game for Felicia Leggett Jack. And one more substitution, Marissa Hamilton. The freshman from Great Valley, New York, into the ball game. Perry, good move. Got the basket to go. She'll shoot one more. Angela Perry coming out of Rochester High School in Illinois. Finished her career with 1,790 points. Also, 882 rebounds. Can't complete the three-point play, but an offensive board for Madison Parker. And Kennedy Williams looked like her three was partially blocked. And Williams with the steal. Freshman taking it all the way in, could not finish. And I think a frustration foul there. Buffalo was trying to take it the other way. You see, turnovers have not been a big concern in this ball game. Bowling Green with just six, Buffalo with nine. Just go to the shooting numbers. Buffalo 51%, Bowling Green 28%. The Bulls have had a lot of high percentage looks. And traveling called. You know, Brad, the big thing I'm seeing is the rebounds. It's a very lopsided rebounding game with Buffalo having 44 tonight and Bowling Green with 28. Buffalo is really controlling the board offensively and defensively. Defensively, they have 31 rebounds compared to Bowling Green's 16. Offensive foul. Sierra Thompson on the drive and Morrison taking the charge. And Hannah Hall 
Trying to split the defense, walked with the basketball. Parker looking for help. And a Bowling Green turnover. Chodade lost the handle. Three-pointer on the way. Too much. But the save by Morrison. Brittany Morrison continuing to make the hustle plays. Earning her minutes out there. She's filling in really nice for Osler. She's, she's already got seven rebounds today. Filling in very nice for the 20 and 12 per performance from Cassie Osler. Jane Euchre and Maddie Cole in the ball game. Maddie Cole, the junior from Sylvania, Ohio. Jane Euchre. The sophomore from Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. And underneath, a nice step through from Teresa Anwuka. Very athletic wing player from Nigeria. Maddie Cole for three, got it. <laughs> Bowling Green's seventh three-pointer of the ball game. They're shooting 33% from beyond the arc. But at the other end, it's Buffalo. More points in the paint. Maddie Cole, turn around, no good. And all the way, it's a block by Euchre. Approaching the halfway point here in the fourth. Off the turnover, Hannah Hall fouled hard. Media timeout, exactly five minutes remaining. It's Buffalo in front by 24. Anwuka, the nice move inside. Felicia Leggett Jack loving her team's effort. Seventy six fifty two year score Buffalo leading Bowling Green before these Hannah Hall free throws. Let's hear more from Samantha Heisman. Thanks Brad. Three years ago when I worked at my local radio station in my small town I was able to hear a variety of sports and there was one name that seemed to stand out more than any other and that was Santoro. From Carly Santoro being the leader for her Bellevue basketball team to her older brother Jalen being the quarterback of the football team. And let's not forget, there was one other Centora who was a big part of their career. Carly had not only her dad, Corey, as a, as a role model at home, but he was also her head coach of the basketball team. Carly was able to finish her career over with over 2,300 points. So it's not a surprise she's here at the collegiate level. And now, just to wrap it up, there's two more Santoros who are making their own way at Bellevue High School, and that's their younger sisters, Casey and Corey. So maybe we'll see them in Falcon uniform someday. Back to you, Brad. Thank you, Samantha, for that story on Bowling Green's leading scorer. Carly Santoro averaging better than 13 points a game on the season. She's got nine points tonight. Doesn't look like we will see Santoro the rest of this one. Maddie Cole facing up. Now the spin in the post and goes off glass. Good move right there by Maddie Cole. 
it's got to be great for Jennifer, Jennifer Roos to see her young lineup that she has out there right now producing well. Bench points tonight, Bowling Green with 21. Buffalo on the attack, draws a Bowling Green foul. Buffalo already in the bonus. You see the Falcons, 21 to 17 advantage on points in the paint tonight. Matty Cole with five of those points. And no good on the first for Anwuka. Seventy nine fifty four, your score. Inside of four minutes remaining. Buffalo and Bowling Green in the annual play for K game, and Madison Parker no good on the three. It was contested. And Shodade no good. Kennedy Williams for three. Got it. Eighth Bowling Green three-pointer. Kennedy Williams coming into this game. Five of nine from three over her last three games. Her offensive output has improved, averaging better than seven a game over the last three. And now off the steal, two more for Williams. And an offensive foul. Kennedy Williams really pushing the pace for the Falcons. It's nice seeing a different set of legs out there, really running down the court, being aggressive in the uh, defensively. It's nice to see that out of a young freshman. It's going to be a fun battle to watch between Kennedy Williams and Sidney Lambert next year because both guards will be back. Definitely, and you know, sometimes when there's a young player who's showing a lot of promise, they get more minutes and could eventually take a starting spot. We'll just have to wait and see. And and one for Jane Euchre. Euchre averages just under five points a game. She's a 61% free throw shooter. She had a pair of threes last time out against OU. And completes the three point play. Buffalo in front by 17 and with the basketball. On Wuka the drive. Maddie Cole a little slow to get up. And Parker going for the rebound is fouled by Hall. be free throws for Bowling Green. Madison Parker, not only a basketball standout, but also a softball standout at Homestead High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Strong three-point shooter. She, like a lot of these Bowling Green players, is taking some time to adjust to the college game. Paul yeah. guarded by Parker. Lisa ups for three, rattles it home. <laughs> Buffalo, now five of 13 from beyond the arc. Two shots coming up for the Falcons. Third personal on Hannah Hall. Hall. 
freshman from Marshall, Illinois, will step to the line. You know, whether or not Kennedy Williams gets that starting spot or not next year, she's going to be seeing the floor a lot more, just as a six-man even, just because the way she brings a new pace to the game, you can just see it in this game. They just, Bowling Green looks a lot faster when she's on the court. Corner three. And this time, it's Marissa Hamilton. Euchre up top. Too strong, gets her own miss. And out of bounds off of Bowling Green. 105 remaining in the ball game. Buffalo going to improve to 22 and 4 on the season. They will add to their Mid-American Conference program win total. This will be their 13th MAC win. The program record. Courtney Wilkins. Now into the scorebook. And off the hands of Euchre and out of bounds. Eleven different Bulls players have scored tonight. And Teresa Anwuka will have a chance to add to her scoring total. Buffalo now 17 of 27 at the line. And Luca able to split the pair. Myers the pull up. Rachel Myers has her first points. The senior from Finley, Ohio. Final seconds of this ball game. Buffalo comes to Bowling Green, Ohio and takes care of business. 88 to 67 the final. Nine straight losses now for Bowling Green. Six straight wins for Buffalo. Three-pointer there from Lisa Up. And the bench, excited about it. We'll be back in a moment here on ESPN. <laughs> Welcome back to the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio, where Buffalo has taken their sixth straight win by a final score of 88 to 67. And I'm joined now by Buffalo head coach Felicia Leggett-Jack. And coach, first of all, you have to be happy with the effort tonight. I'm really happy because it's really hard to win on the road and our young ladies are just locked in. We just want to make a difference in this conference. Now 22 of the last 23 games, you've either tied or had the advantage on points in the paint. That's an area where you've been very happy with. Especially being a post coach, you know, my last couple years here at Buffalo, I started wondering if I was a good post coach or not, but this year they kind of make me feel like I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, what, and what improvement from the last game that I know you'll be happy to see is getting to the free throw line. You were just two of five against Akron. Get to the line, what, 26 times tonight? That's what I, I noticed. I couldn't believe that we didn't get to the line as much as we um, did in the last game. But our whole motivation was to be in attack mode because you never know on the road, your leg's not under your shot. It's a different gym. Let's not rely on a three-point shot. And they did a tremendous job with that. And with this win tonight, you not only continue the program record for Mid-American Conference wins in the season with 13 now, but you also lock up the MAC East regular season title. How much what does that mean to this program? 
it means a lot, you know, something we've never done before. We're going to always, always acknowledge when we make um, moments like this happen. But we're not satisfied. We cer certainly want to do a different thing. We want to get to the NCAA. We want to really represent the, uh, the MAC in, on, on the biggest stage uh, in women's basketball. But in order to do that, we have to continue to improve and continue to take every possession and to be the most important possession. Coach, appreciate your time. Enjoy that five-hour ride home. Enjoy the movies on the bus. Oh, Bulls, we're coming home with a W, baby. <laughs> All right, Buffalo head coach Felicia Leggett-Jack, and we'll be back in a moment to wrap this one up here on ESPN. Rise. Head and shoulders above the rest. Stand out. Never lost in the crowd. Your unique story. The one and only you. Fully supported. Fully believed in. Together we will learn to lead arm in arm. So much in common. So much to share. We will be challenged, but we will overcome. Because it is our turn to shine. Belong. Stand out. Go far. At Bowling Green State University. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. One final time as Buffalo gets the road victory 88 to 67. This was a dominant Bulls performance in this one. At one point, they led by as many as 26. You know, you could just see Buffalo really just push the pace all game. They were moving fast down the court, and you can see that the rebounds were just hugely disadvantaged for Bowling Green. They got up and got every rebound. Buffalo just dominated this game on all facets. And the numbers you see tell the story. The Bulls shooting better than 50% from the field. They were better than 50%, it seemed like, for the entire game. They dominate on the glass 49-32. to 32. And then points in the paint, stat we just talked about with Buffalo head coach Felicia Legajack, 44-20 to 20 advantage. That's an area where they have continued to get better. And that's going to win them a lot of ball games. Absolutely. I mean, just look at those numbers. You've got 42.9 from three, over 50% from the field, 49 rebounds, and 44 points in the paint. With numbers like that, there's not many teams that can stop this Buffalo team. And Bowling Green had just one player finishing in double figures tonight. That was Andrea Cecil with 10 points in this one. And as we look back on this game, you got to go right to the starting five for Buffalo. They had 61 of the 88 points tonight. They got it done from the beginning, led by Cassie Ausler. Absolutely, Cassie was great. She did have a slower game, but you could see it on her stat line. It was just spread throughout all. She had, a, she had steals, she had rebounds, she had assists, she had points. She had every part of this game in her hand. Cassie Ausler finishing the ball game with 20 points and 12 rebounds. A double-double performance for one of the leaders for this Buffalo program. That's gonna do it for this broadcast as the Bulls win their sixth in a row. For my broadcast partner, Tony Mineking, and our sideline reporter, Samantha Heishman, and our producer, Joe Goodman, I'm Brad Wozniki saying so long to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.